You read the headlines, low carbohydrate, high fat diet, keto like diet, increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. <gasps> I gotta stop doing it. I gotta go back to my old crappy diet. I'll just start eating sugar again. It's healthier. This is the junk, okay? This stupid headlines grabbing stuff ruins our society. Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle rant. I knew I was going to have to respond to this. Uh, a new study was just kind of released. A lot of people have been sending me links to it regarding a low carbohydrate, high fat diet. And I guess the data that they extrapolated from it was that people had higher LDL cholesterol carrier levels, which they associate with, obviously with coronary artery disease. And they also had high ApoB levels, which is another marker supposedly for coronary artery disease. So people are saying, is this, is this diet bad for you? Well, I, I rolled my eyes before even looking through it, but I printed out the article. I got it right here. It's from the American College of Cardiology. It's titled, Low Carbohydrate, High Fat, Keto-Like Diet. Notice they wrote Keto-Like Diet. Hedging their bets right there. An increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Number one, it was done by taking 305 participants who filled out a questionnaire about their diet. A one-time diet. Who stays on the same diet? One-time diet, and they're going to extrapolate that over 10 or 11 years or something like that. So right off the bat, it's not accurate. But let's, let's assume that it is accurate, just for, for argument's sake. Okay? The term low-carbohydrate, high-fat diet, but defined by the study, was that you had to have you couldn't eat more than 25% of your calories from carbs. Now, as far as I'm concerned, that's not, a, that's not a ketogenic diet. We know that. If you're eating a 2,000 calorie diet and 500 calories of that 25% is coming from carbohydrates, that's still a lot of carbohydrates you're eating in your diet. Okay, so uh, it's not such a low carb diet. Okay, you're certainly not ketogenic in that situation. And the fat content had to be. Um, at least 45% of your diet in fat. Now, that's half your food is fat, okay? Which means that you're eating a very low amount of protein. So right off the bat, this is not my ketogenic diet. This is not even an a-ketogenic diet. This is a high-fat, okay, moderate, low-carb diet. Terrible for you, right? All the wrong foods, right? Because I'm sure most of the fat sources that these people are eating, about 50% of their calories coming from fat were probably garbage fat, probably bacon and creams, and you know, whipped cream or whatever the whatever cockamamie crazy follow, diets that people follow when they do these, you know, Atkins like diets. There's no discipline to them. There's no there's no structure to them. They just kind of eat. Twenty five percent of your diet coming from you know twenty five percent calories of your diet from carbs is a lot of carbs. Okay, so right off the bat, and the fact that they only wrote down one diet that they followed in that whole 10-year period when they were actually doing a, a what they considered to be a high-fat, you know, uh, low-carb diet is flawed right from the beginning, okay? Now, the funny thing about the results is that the results were not really that bad. The low-carb, high-fat diet had uh, LDL levels of 3.80, okay? Which is, I guess, different units compared to like what we do here in the United States. And the regular diet had a 3.64, so it's not really that significantly different. The low carb, which is not no carb, it's a low carb, high fat diet, was probably a crappy diet. As a matter of fact, they didn't even write what these people were eating in here. They just said, well, it could be anything. <laughs> you can go to McDonald's and probably have a, a cheeseburger probably fits the classification you know, of a high fat, you know, low carb diet, you know, it could be eating cheeseburgers all day and probably not because the, the cheeseburgers have way more protein than, than, than would qualify in this diet situation. So this study is flawed. And they even said here that, that it's funny, the researchers even said um, that uh, the participants only provided dietary information at one point in time, which is what limits this study. 
Research has also acknowledged that not everyone responds to a low-carb, high-fat diet in the same way. Uh, but so they're making all these assertions and they're putting headlines in all these stupid social media posts saying that a ketogenic diet, which this is not a ketogenic diet because it's only low carb, a ketogenic diet, okay, is causing an increase in cholesterol and potentially, you know, vascular issues, you know, the blockages in coronary arteries. Completely misleading, completely not true. BS study, looking for headlines obviously trying to support the, the corn and wheat growers of the United States, saying, no, eat your carbs. It's the fat that's causing all the problem. Plus, I guarantee you that the fat that was probably eaten in this diet was mostly saturated fats. We know that most of the fatty acids that you consume in your diet should not come from saturated fats. Those are negative food partitioning agents, just like carbohydrates, sugars are. You could eat pure sugar in this diet, and as long as it's below 25%, of your total expenditure for the day, you fit perfectly into this study. So it's BS, okay? I'd like them to take people who follow my recommendations, which is a high protein, moderate fat diet coming from good quality essential fatty acids, omega-3s, omega-6s, you know, heart healthy omega-6 fats, monounsaturated fats like macadamia nut oil and, and extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, and good quality protein sources from lean sources of fish, chicken, and even some lean red meat and whole eggs. I guarantee you, you would not get these results. You would get lower LDL cholesterol, lower AP ApoB protein. You would get less coronary artery disease over 10 years, and people would be actually lean. They didn't even look at people's body composition on this. I bet you these people look terrible. And, they, and these are people who are in their 50s. So don't believe everything you read. You got to sit down and look at how they figured this study out, what the diet was. There was no structured diet. It was just a, basically a questionnaire. They handed out to people and said, here, we're going to give you, we're going to give you 50 bucks if you follow this, uh, fill this uh, questionnaire out. If you, have you ever eaten a, a low, a low carb, high fat diet? Yes. Oh, you did? Uh, write it down on paper when you did it and how long you did it for. That's how this study was done. Completely flawed. So at the end of the day, you know, unfortunately, non-structured diets uh, and I call you know Atkins had a great idea he said look you know what this was years ago don't eat carbohydrates you're gonna lose weight I guarantee it. you're gonna be in ketosis you're gonna lose weight and most people ate you know probably 60 70 percent fat you know and the rest protein but no carbs so they lost weight because of that but they weren't necessarily healthier and their body composition wasn't necessarily better because we know that in order to build muscle and to lose body fat exclusively on a diet like this, you have to follow a performance-based diet, which is what I've been advocating for 25 years. High protein, moderate fat coming from good essential uh, and, and heart-healthy fats predominantly, a little bit of saturated fats in there, and low to no carbs, not 25%, less than you know, 5%, and having only indirect sources of carbohydrates so that your brain is in the state of ketosis, using fat as a fuel source, and your body is using fats as, as the predominant uh, fuel source in the body, and it's using protein to repair the body, not just from weight training, if you, but from all the nails, skin, hair, internal lining of your intestinal tract, enzymes, hormones, uh, that are constantly in a state of turnover and flux. You need to provide those building blocks, for, especially for the immune system. So. When you give the body what it needs, you get back good results. When you give the body shit gas, you get bad performance out of the body. And you know what the funny thing is? At the end of the day, the performance wasn't even that different on this stupid diet as it was from people who weren't following that diet. So you know what, American Heart Association or American College of Cardiology, if you guys want to really impress me, do a real, come to me. I'll, I'll give you some, some, some so I'll lay out some guidelines. We can make a really, really good study and have people really track whether a healthy ketogenic diet works well and reduces the incidence of heart disease. I can guarantee you it does. Stuff like this pisses me off because it sends the wrong message to people, people who are headline readers. You read the headlines, low carbohydrate, high fat diet, keto-like diet, increases risk of cardiovascular disease. <gasps> I gotta stop doing it. I gotta go back to my old crappy diet. I'll just start eating sugar again. It's healthier. This is the junk. Okay, this stupid headlines grabbing stuff ruins 
our society because it sends the wrong message because people don't know. People just don't know about diet. They only know about headlines. Misleading, okay? But that's what they want. They want people to stay, keep, keep eating your sugar and your carbohydrates, blow your diabetes up through the roof, okay? Cause heart disease, we'll sell you more drugs, we'll, we'll do more surgeries on you, and the medical association will make way more money. That's what we really want from this country. That's, that's the message the government wants to send to us. They don't want us healthy, they want us unhealthy. Sad, but true. Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle rant.